This episode of Hoochos is brought to you by AF Cultures. Welcome back to Hoochos. Today on Hoochos, I'm going to be showing you how to grow Kratky hydroponic cucumbers, infinite Kratky from our infinite Kratky series. I'm also going to be doing a soft release on my brand new YouTube channel, All The Gear No Idea which will be linked in the description of every video from now on. So in the previous videos of this series, we explored Kratky hydroponic tomatoes, which I grew in this greenhouse over the life cycle of the tomato plant, and we got some fairly impressive results, proving that this method in practice can support large fruiting plants. The second video in the series, we added in float valves, a vertical form factor of float valves. I had a couple of that style of float valves fail on me, although the infinite crack key method seemed to work up to the point of those float valves failing. With that system, I collected some pumpkins, but the pumpkins suffered because of the raising and lowering of the water and they were being drowned essentially in their roots by the, the draining completely and topping up. What I'm going to try and achieve here is a steady nutrient level so that the roots continually have the top of the water to work with so that they have oxygen exchange. We should be able to achieve that with this float valve system if I can manage to keep that reservoir from running dry. So the way that I created these crowd key systems was by selecting a 65 litre holeless bucket and then creating lids for it. Now you just get around creating these lids by buying something with lids if you like. I just prepared some plywood and then treated it by burning it, essentially sealing the plywood. Into this, I then cut holes. Now I made a hole big enough for a net pot. If I were to do it again, I would just utilize the 42 millimeter jiffy hole without the bottom that I added on the first time using our bamboo skewer or just plain stick technique. And you'll see why this works really well a little bit later in the video. In the pumpkin infinite crack key video, I added in float valves. The vertical float valves would work just fine, as well as the horizontal ball floats that I added in and will be using for this cucumber grow. Both achieve the same thing, and if you keep on top of your nutrient solution so that it doesn't raise and lower, the roots form across the film on top of the water and allow oxygen exchange on the top without any detrimental effects to those roots, which we're actually gonna see in a really nice root time lapse a little bit later in the video. Okay, so I'm now going to run hose uh, between all of the pots, connect them all up to the same irrigation line, run it back to my reservoir, connect the hose together, turn it on, and that should now be filling. Yep. So that is filling from our gravity feed reservoir, and it should be filling all of them. And yes. Once they're full to the float level, we can come back and I'll probably need to top them up because what we're going to try to achieve is we want to go above the amount that the float fills to. We want the roots to utilize the top from the float to the roof and then the float will take over at that point. Okay, so that didn't really take long at all to fill up. I'm going to top them up with a watering can and we can put in our plants. But first, I want to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, AF Cultures. AF Cultures is a service that allows you to transform your ideas into stunning custom metal backlit LED signs. I reached out to them when I was starting a new YouTube channel because I've already worked with them before in the creation of my Hucho's sign, which is in the background of most of my Hucho's videos. And I wanted to create a new backdrop for the new set of my new channel. This is the new logo for my new channel, which I designed myself and sent over to the guys at AF Cultures. They laser cut it out of a metal plate and wired it up with LEDs of my choosing. That looks pretty bloody good. 
So I'll leave a link in the description to AF Cultures and a link to my new channel at the end of this video so that you can head to both of those places and check them out. As there may well be a little bit of crossover as I prepare the laboratory for. Here I have some cucurbits. They're actually Lebanese cucumbers. I'm actually gonna try a perlite this time because I have a heap of perlite lying around and it's easier than the clay balls like cucurbit and you can see um, it is overrooted in my propagation tray. So that's good. Well, it's fine. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the same as we did last time. Grab a stick and poke our 42 millimeter Jiffy Peat pellet straight through the top. Make sure that it's touching the surface. It is. That is going to be absolutely fine. I'm gonna do that for the other small round hole. As you can see, We've rooted, well, just so much. <laughs> and I'm just going to push it through into the hole so that it holds itself upright. And we'll just drop that in, making sure it touches the top of the water. Those roots will grow directly down into the water and spread across the surface. These two, I will just be planting them into the perlite. Make sure I plant this one as deep as possible. I'm gonna go in the one with the hole in it, which is going to require it to go quite deep. I'm hoping that perlite wicks up a little bit. May need to put that on an angle. Uh, and the second one, drop that in and we'll see how we go. All right, so it's late afternoon. These plants are gonna wilt before the nighttime when they'll spring back and recover before the next day. I'm gonna try and get some time-lapse cameras out here in the next couple of days so we can see how they grow. that result. I'm going to put up some pictures of the cucumbers about a week ago at their optimal stage of growth. Since then we've gone into winter and the temperatures have almost completely stunted their growth and killed 
a couple of the plants actually. Hydroponics is extremely forgiving, but it doesn't change the fact that some plants cannot tolerate low temperatures. We have a ton of fruit set on all of the surviving plants anyway. One of the perlite plants died almost immediately and the other has not performed as well as the small hold jiffy method. So I would highly recommend utilizing the smaller hold jiffy method. I just got a better result. I would have liked to have gotten these vines a little bit larger. However, I didn't really plan ahead for the time frame that these cucumbers would be living through. So we may revisit this method in the spring. Other than that, I'm actually really happy with how this method turned out. And we've got a ton of fruit. I'm gonna just collect it now and show you. I have actually been collecting a couple um, because I've been making a lot of tandoori chicken. I make homemade tzatziki to go with it and I use the cucumbers for that. Not a bad harvest, especially considering there's not much plant mass and I've been collecting them as they've been growing. Let's have a look at the roots of the plant that we had in our time lapse. So I'm actually fine with removing this plant because it is dead. If I remove the lids of the plants that aren't dead, I actually think it's detrimental to their growth because it takes the roots, as you can see in the time lapse, it would make those roots sort of consolidate together and remove them from being on top of the nutrient solution, which is where they're getting their oxygen from. So if we lift this up, I'm not 100% sure why this plant died, but huh, there's our little friend, the spider. <laughs> you see the spider, mate? <laughs> but as you can see, our roots are mostly consolidated to the top of the container there. So disturbing this now would probably have been detrimental to the plant as it was alive. And you can see that the, the roots just sort of mass up once you disturb them, as opposed to, you can see where the roots have actually been working and like climbing the sides of the container. This technique has worked absolutely perfectly with the float valves consistently topping up. This is the largest and healthiest plant. Let's lift this up and see what we've got. Oh wow. Let's see if I can get you in there. Look at that. Have a go at that. The roots have worked their way and clung to the side of the container. I'm actually surprised it's not pushing the float valve down and I'll just lift it. But you can see as I lift it, all those roots, they're going to pull together. So you really don't want to be doing this while you're trying to keep the plant alive. Those roots are really nice. Look at those roots. And you can see here, the Jiffy Peat Pellet has worked perfectly fine. <laughs> how good well that worked well well i'm actually fairly happy with how this technique turned out with better planning and plant management i think we've got a winner the takeaways from today are if you are going to use infinite crack key make sure you stay on top of the reservoir the reason that the pumpkins didn't work as well as they should have was because the reservoirs kept topping up and draining down because of the inconsistencies in the supply of nutrients. So as long as you keep that reservoir topped up through the float valves, you'll actually get decent results if you also plant according to the seasons. <laughs> so thanks for watching this episode of Hoochos. Happy hydroponicking and I'll see you next time. <laughs> as I prepare the laboratory for plant tissue culture.